Hi you eight, welcome to video five for the clock project. And uh, this is the big one where we're gonna put everything together into one assembly. So by now, you should have made all of these components that make up the clock individually using Autodesk Inventor. And today we're gonna learn how to put them all together like my one on the right to create your virtual clock mechanism that's all in the right place and all joined together. So before you uh, start this today, you need to have used or made each of these parts in Inventor by following videos one through to four. If you've missed out any of these components, please go back and finish them before you start the work for today's lesson. Uh, as always, you've got the engineer's drawing to help you. You should have your printed copy. If not, uh, screenshot this page and then you can uh, use that to help you out. So what we're gonna do is put them all together to create our finished clock mechanism. So uh, let's do that now. As always, we should have Autodesk Inventor loaded. If you haven't got that or you can't get it to load, as I've said in every video, go back to video number one and uh, that's got some help there in case it doesn't always load at first time. Now, today we are gonna be doing things slightly differently to normal. So we're going to be using the assembly feature. So same as before, you just right click, uh, sorry, left click on assembly and it will load. Now it might take a little while if you've not used it before. And what we're going to do is start to place in the components that we've made. Now to do this, uh, you go up here. Now if it says place from content center, you just want to click on that and you just want place to appear. And from here we can find, and I'm gonna go back to the folder that we were in before. So to do that, you click on your name, documents, we're then gonna go down to technology, year eight clock, and here are all the components that we've been making over the last few lessons. We're gonna put uh, one of each of these components into our assembly, and then I'll show you how to line them all up so that it looks like the finished mechanism. So first of all, we're gonna take the main body of our clock, that was the first thing we made, and I'm gonna click open. And if you use the scroll wheel on the mouse, you can zoom in and out, and you can see that you can place this wherever you like. So you just click with the left button on your mouse, and it will place one. Now, if you carry on clicking, you'll end up with a million of these all in your, um, all in your assembly. You only want one, and once you clicked it, you then go right click, and OK, and that takes you out of the place tool. Now, ideally, you want to see uh, your shape with all of the lines around the outside as well. So if it, at the moment, it's a little bit tricky to look at. So to change this, you go to View, Visual Style, and we want to see the shaded with edges. And you see it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. We then go back to the Assemble tab at the top, and we can then click Place to add in the next component. And the next component we're gonna add in is the mounting bracket. And you click on that and then click open. Once again, we only wanna click once before we go right click and okay. And that means we can then only have one mounting bracket in our assembly. And what we can do now is we can cl click and we can move this around but you see at the moment, it's not gonna line up the way that we want it to. So let's sort that out right now. A good idea at this stage is to right click, so click on your clock main body, then right click, and we're gonna tick where it says grounded. And what that means is I can't drag and move this one around, it stays fixed in place. This one though, where it's not grounded, I can move it around freely. First thing we're going to do then, is start to line up our components. And we're gonna do that using the constrain tool. So if we click constrain, this acts as the joins that help place everything in the right place. So I'm gonna start by clicking this surface of the uh, main body, and I'm gonna click the inside face of the mounting bracket. And I'll click them both together, and it snaps in place like so. And you click apply to make that happen. I then want to line up the middle of our um, mechanism with the middle of this hole. To do that, if you click on this or hover over this cylindrical surface, this cylinder 
sticking up, you see you get this dotted line running through the center. Click on that one. Now you then need to zoom in a bit and we want to get the same um, lines appear on the inside edge of our hole and you click that. And if we zoom out and click apply, you can see now these both line up. We call that concentric where they both line up in the way that you were expecting them to. And you should now see that your mounting bracket is in place. Next up, we're going to add in some of that hardware that we made in lesson three. So we're going to add in, uh, starting off with the rubber washer. So we're going to click on that and go open. As always, we only want one of those before right clicking and going OK. Uh, we can then use the rotate tool so we can have a little look around. Remember, anytime you want to get out of this, you right click and go OK. We're going to use the constraints again to constrain this surface to the top of our mounting bracket. So let's do that one. Let's constrain. We're going to click the top of this one and the mounting bracket, and that constrains them together. Make sure you click apply. Then we're going to do the same again. We're going to line up this cylinder with the middle of this. And you need to make sure you've got the same dotted line appear. You can see it appears uh, just in the middle of the page. And then we click apply to make sure that one stays. You can close that tool. And there we go. The uh, rubber washer is now in place. Now at this stage, I'm gonna show you a little trick to make these uh, look a little bit more realistic. And it will also help when we come to line up some of our other parts later. So we can change the appearance of these tools using the bar at the top. So if we click on uh, the main body, we can then go to the appearance button up here. Currently it says default. If we click on it, give it a second. It sometimes takes a little while to load. Uh, let's try that one again. There we go. And now we can change this to black. So there we go, we've got black as an option. There we go. If we change the wall bracket, so the mounting bracket, we can click on that one. Click on default up at the top and we can change that. And now we want to try and find some nice metal. So let's scroll down. Let's see what we can find in here. Uh, let's go for some polished steel. That could look quite nice. And that will change the appearance of that one. And then click OK. The next one we'll go for is the, uh, the little washer, the rubber washer. And if we have a look on here, we might be able to find... Uh, remember, this is an alphabetical list. We can go for black rubber. And that means that's going to look a little bit more realistic when we use that. So now we can see we've started to apply some really good appearances to make this look a little bit more lifelike. Let's carry on adding in some of our components then. So next up, we will have the metal washer. So we'll add one of those in. And we only need one, so we can right click and go OK. We'll use the constraints again. This time we'll click this inside edge of the rubber washer. We'll then rotate round, so we're looking underneath the metal one. And you might need to click where it says two here. And we'll click underneath to highlight that edge and we'll just click apply. And if we rotate back around, you can see it's lined up, but it's not quite in the center. So to do this, we then go for the middle of that cylinder, we then click the inside edge of the washer, and it lines up both of those as soon as we click apply. Uh, this time though, we'll change the metal washer to look a little bit more like metal, so we'll click on it, go to the appearances tab, and we're gonna change this to brass, and we'll go for brass satin. Uh, there we go. So that now looks a little bit like the uh, washer on the real mechanism. We'll then add in the metal nut. So we'll do the same again then. And of course we only want one of those. This time we'll use the constraints. I might apply the uh, constraint to the cylinder first by doing it that way around. And then if we select one of these lines and then the top of the metal washer, it snaps it all into place. And then you can click apply. Um, I think we'll make that the same colour as the metal washer because they are the same material. So we'll click on it, go back up to the appearances 
drop down list and we'll go for the brass as well and there we have it we've got the metal uh, nut fitted as well so all that's left then is to attach the hands of the clock mechanism so let's do that back up to place uh, we're going to start with the hour hand so uh, let's click that one first and we'll place one of those in the assembly we'll use the constraint tool to line up the inside edge there with this inside edge here. But notice it's currently up the wrong way. So to change that, if we have a look at the solution, we go to opposed and we click that one and you can notice that it's flipped over the hand before we click apply. Uh, then we want to line it up with the surface. So we click the top of our hand and then we're gonna click this surface here to line them both up. And that should be fine. Let's just make sure. There we go. That all seems good. Uh, now we'll add in the minute hand. We'll do the same again. So now we'll add in the minute hand. I only want one of them, of course. We'll constrain the inside edge where you get the dotted line to the inside edge up here. And of course we want this to be opposed. Uh, just click accept, that'll be okay. And then the last one we'll add in will be the second hand. This time we'll constrain this edge to the top of this edge. Uh, you do want it to be opposed. And then the last thing we will do is just line up some of these edges. So we're gonna constrain the bottom side here. And you need to rotate around. It can be a bit tricky to have a look at this edge. So you might need to play around with your zoom. We then click on the two and we're gonna line up this side here and click apply and just accept the relationship there. Then we can start to have a proper look at the whole mechanism. And there we have it. The last thing I would do is change some of the appearances. So the second hand that we've got is red. So if you click the appearances tab, uh, if you scroll down, there is an option. We'll go for smooth red, there we go. And to make it a little bit more visible, I would change the hands, uh, the second, sorry, the minute and the hour hands to uh, something maybe like blue. And that should help them show up a little bit more. And there we have it. There is our clock mechanism all assembled. Now, if you wanna get a bit fancy and move the hands around, you can do. Uh, you can just click and drag them, uh, in theory anyway. Not all of them want to work sometimes, but uh, you should be able to move them around. If not, it's quite okay to leave them like that. So all that's left to do for now is to save this assembly. And we're gonna go file, save as, making sure you're in your year eight clock um, folder. And then we'll call this one clock assembly. And then you'll click save. So that is our fully assembled clock mechanism. And it should look pretty close to our real world version. So if you have another look back at our slides here, you can see the two are pretty similar. And in terms of their sizes, they are almost identical. What we can now do next lesson is start to design the face of your clock so that you can make something a little bit more personal. We will then show you how to laser cut those and then you'll be able to assemble your clock with a mechanism ready to take home.